Welcome to 843 TV. I'm your host, Lisa Richardson. And I'm your other host, Annalisa Itkor. And we are here today in beautiful Buford. We are meeting with some of the representatives from Bridges Preparatory School. Joining us is one of our first guests, Mr. Chris Wilson, who's the principal of the upper school. We also have the head of schools, Dr. Nick Ithamidis. Joining us also is Dee Matthews, who was one of the board members of Bridges Prep. So stick around for more 843 TV, where communities come to speak. Eight Four Three TV, where Bluffton comes to speak, where Spring Island comes to speak, where Hilton Head Island comes to speak, where Buford comes to speak. Eight Four Three TV, where communities come to speak. Thanks for joining us for this edition of 843 TV. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Nick Ithamidis. He is the head of schools at Bridges Preparatory School, as well as Chris Wilson, who is the principal of the upper schools. Now, some of our viewers may not be familiar with Bridges Preparatory, so why don't you give us a little bit of a background? Bridges is a state-approved charter school. Uh, it was started about five years ago with parents and community members that wanted a little bit different uh, educational style, more intimate, uh, more parental involvement. Uh, so the school was d developed a charter, took uh, over a year, and good-minded folks got together and they said, what do we want for kids? How do we want th what that to look like? What are the expectations for those kids? They wrote the charter, the charter was approved, and they started small. Right now, we're a K through 10 um, charter school. We've got about 665 kids. We're adding 11th grade next year, 12th grade the year after. So in a couple years, we'll be a full-fledged K through 12 uh, public charter school. Now, you did give us a little bit of an indication on what makes up a charter school, but charter school versus traditional school, what are we looking at? Okay, so the tr a charter school uh, is driven by the charter. Uh, public schools are kind of driven by uh, the district and their mission and goals. We have mission and goals as well. But you can carve out a niche by, by being a charter school. So if you wanted to focus on the arts, if you want to focus on math and science, if you want to focus on STEM education, if you want to, you can choose the focus. As long as you meet the state standards in the way you do that, because we're still a public school, sure. um, our difference is we can accept kids from all across South Carolina because we're a state charter school. So most of our kids come locally, but technically we could accept kids from Columbia if they wanted to drive down here every day. Interesting, yeah. interesting. It's a great reason to move to beautiful Beaufort, right? There you yeah, go. The charter school. <laughs> but Let's it's really the focus. We're a Padilla and a STEM school. And those are the two things that our foundation is built on. The Padilla is a model of teaching and a methodology uh, about educating the whole child. It's built around seminars and project-based education. And then uh, we infuse um, science, uh, math, uh, engineering, um, and art into those um, subject areas. Now you've added 10th grade. Yeah. So you all understand you're on three different campuses, so your upper school is separate. Would you share with us a little bit about that and how that's going with the high school curriculum and so forth? Well, I'm gonna let Chris feel that Okay. One. Okay. Uh, our 10th grade is going really well. We have an addition of staff this year, so we have about 13 teachers full-time in, in, in our building. Um, and the teachers that I have are, have really been like a family. They, they, they come in, they ask, what can we do to help? Um, they come early, they stay late for our kids. Um, if we have a duty schedule, they, you know, I may only have two or three people on duty, but there's six to eight of them out there, you know, doing, doing the duty. So we've, we've really come together as a, as a team and, and they're in it for the kids. Um, I couldn't ask for a better team, I just have to say that. Um, we, of course, offer 10th grade courses this year with uh, honors algebra, uh, pre-calc, um, econ, and so uh, depending on our staffing for next year, then we're on course to add, add uh, classes for the 11th grade. So next spring, we're planning on adding a dual enrollment course. We're going to pilot this program with uh, TCL. and. Um, hopefully be able to add dual enrollment courses so kids who would like to get ahead uh, with their college credits um, for, for next year. Um, AP is also something we anticipate for next year. We have a few 
a few teachers who are um, already certified. We're hoping to have a couple of more so that we can offer some more AP classes for those kids as well. Um, right now, I would say our biggest growing pain uh, as we grow, and, and, and the school is great, the kids are great, the staff is great, the problems that we have is the facility. And we're, uh, you know, we have rooms that are constantly used throughout the day. Um, we have no available space to go anywhere else. And so, uh, so that's probably one of our biggest uh, issues that we have. And, you know, it, it, like I said earlier, as a family, sometimes families, you know, when you're, you have hallways that are, that are uh, you know, very small and you're trying to fit 130 kids through there. So we get a little cranky with each other sometimes. But, but uh, as a family, they come together and the kids are learning to cope with that. So you've just described a typical family, actually. No. Getting cranky <laughs> with each other, but we all come together. And uh, do you want to, real briefly, take a sneak peek into maybe what's ahead? Because you're at a point where expansion is, is probably the future, but next step. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that uh, up to Dr. I and, and our board to, to discuss because uh, we, we've still got some, some question marks that we're looking at there. I, I think the board will talk future. about it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the nuts and bolts of it. We really, uh, the vision and the future is a K-12 through building. That, that's what we need. Everybody knows that. The board's been working overdrive for years to get this done. Um, it's taken them a little bit longer than they had wanted or anybody had wanted, but there are so many roadblocks uh, to get that done. I, we're very close. We hope to open, up, uh, open the high school and the new facility uh, next fall. So um, right now we're in three different campuses. It's, we're all spread out. Um, we make it work, but we need a building. Let's briefly touch on a more positive topic, uh, which is the strengths and also the unique opportunities that you offer with this addition of the upper classes. I, well, Chris has talked about this. The, the small class size and the family feeling throughout all of our campuses is our greatest strength. What we can offer that most schools, I don't, I, maybe, is that intimacy, that, that family feeling, uh, the immediate response to parents and kids. Nobody falls through the cracks in our school. It's too small. Um, we are embarking, not only just Padea help us uh, in our STEM focus and a strong curriculum, but we have started um, a very successful international program. We've sent two groups of kids to China last year. We're sending a group of kids and faculty and board members and parents to Greece in November. We're sending another group of kids to, uh, for a third trip to China in February. We've sent kids to leadership training in Maine. And uh, we have a, um, a, a, an exchange program in Italy lined up for next year, as well as a, maybe a fourth trip to China. So that, yeah, that's where go. <laughs> and we do this somewhat on a shoestring. We have contacts in China that once we get there, they pay all the expenses for all of our kids. So we're basically paying airfare to get them there. Uh, we offer summer camps for Chinese kids in our school. Um, I would hope that next year we would be having um, international students pay tuition. Um, we're a visa approved school, so we carved out a little bit of an international niche. That's very cool. That's some great stuff. So you all stick around. We're going to be back with more for um, Bridges Prep in just a minute. Welcome back to 843 TV, where today we're with the folks at the Bridges Prep School and we're learning all about the wonderful opportunities there. Joining us now is Ms. D. Matthews. Welcome, thank you for coming today. Thank you for having us. Now we're going to be talking about the Board of Directors. Why don't you share a little bit about your board and how they're shaping up for the new elections coming up? There are nine members on our board, currently eight sitting because we have one that resigned to take a position within the school, which is great. Yeah. We're, we're all excited mm -hmm. about that. But we're very excited about this year's election because we do have four slots that will be filled, but we've had nine candidates apply, I mean, either get nominated or apply. Uh, they are a back, their background is business and education. Uh, some have both. But it's just their energy level and the fact that we have this kind of um, interest. Yes, in it, yes. Because there have been times we haven't had so many. So we're very excited. It's a great slate of candidates. I think that's just a sign of your continued growth. And I love how you use the word excitement in the candidates. That's good stuff. We are, very much. Now, with 
it being an election, of course, people are going to want to know how do ballots get cast, when are results announced, all of that. Uh, this board meeting this week on the 17th of October, we have Meet the Candidates Forum in which everyone can come. There are, uh, are a slate of questions that will be asked of each candidate. They get to, the actual stakeholders get to see and meet the candidates. Uh, this, then it goes on, uh, ballots must be casted by 4 p.m. and we're very strict on that, October 30th. And we have a little method to the madness, so to speak. There are mailboxes at all facilities that receive the ballots. The keys for those uh, mailboxes at the present time are with our attorney. He will come and pick up um, after 4.30, 5 o'clock on the October 30th, he'll pick up those mailboxes, leave the keys to be locked in a vault at the school. Wow. He will take the mailboxes <laughs> then with him. He brings them back to our November meeting in which they are then opened in public and counted in public. Yes. Interesting. Very democratic. Very yes. much and so. And will you announce the results at that meeting? Oh, yes. Wow. They will be counted and, and everyone will see at that point. Yes. Excellent. Well, we've been talking about all the new and exciting things coming up, but I understand you recently were honored with a specific recognition. Would you share about that? Yeah, last spring we were notified uh, that we were a school of distinction, the South Carolina um, Charter School, named as one of the top three schools in uh, the state, which was awesome. It's really based on three things, student performance, student growth, overall organizational structure, and meeting all your reports and deadlines, and fiscal um, fidelity. And we scored as high as you could on all of um, uh, two of those three, and our student scores were so high that we qualified. So it was really a great recognition for all the hard work. Um, and again, we're talking about everybody in the building from board down, teachers up, uh, front desk people. There's a total commitment to that school and those kids. So. And you mentioned that commitment, that's so important. How do you keep everybody engaged? From board up, <laughs> students. <laughs> Well, I'll say the board, we really truly right now have a great board, you know, and so we're hoping to maintain that. But they're engaged, they're dedicated, uh, they give of their time. This is selfless. There's no pay for our board, even though it's an elected position, there's not a pay. But we have worked from the time that I was elected on it, I can say what's been going on. We are working on the facilities, getting this new school, making sure that the curriculum is what we need it to be, that the teachers have what they need, that the head of school has what he needs that we communicate um, with transparency to our, not only the teachers and the um, head of school, but to the parents as well, so that everybody is involved. Everybody's a stakeholder. And when you give the people choice, uh, position of stakeholder, the vested interest, it just helps all the way around. Everybody gains from it. I imagine with the board of directors, you know, you have these changes coming up, growing into a high school environment. So it's actually gotta be really helpful that there's that potential for change. I mean, it's gotta be one of the strengths of your board that there's that potential for new faces every year. Well, there is. We, um, the elections, this year we'll elect five. Next year we'll have elections for four. So it's a two year term. And it, so it does, but I think the people that are running actually want to serve. In other words, have a need. We have a nominating committee, um, and which is headed by our publicists. And they're vetted. In other words, it's, look, are these people, do they have a business background or an education background? Um, they're, you know, he talks to them. Do you know what you're, not what you're getting into, that's, but do you know what is your commitment level? And I think that's part of it. They want to serve. They want to help. They've seen the growth. They've seen the potential for success. And who doesn't want to be a part right. of that? Right. I was just going to say yes. they're at, at an exciting point, a yeah, pivotal really point is. where there's a lot happening down the road. Are most of the board members parents? You know, we have some that are parents, but there are a lot of board members that are not parents. They're, like I said, business or educational backgrounds. They have no children there. So it's just really a commitment to serve and to help. That's inspiring. Help yeah. pay it That's forward. Really inspiring. Yes. Mm -hmm. And real quick, if someone wanted to get involved in help, then they might not be in a position to run for the board. Is there ways? that they can help to support you all in the school in general? Sure. I'm sure that's a long list, so that might be for what another segment. Like for their Who do they contact, up? let's just say? Yes. 
Um, we will, within the next probably year, start a capital fund that we would love to have people, but as well as volunteers, people can come fill out, of course, the sled checks. Okay. Those, are, those are everywhere, right. you and I know that. Mm -hmm. But we welcome people that would like to come and give them their time, whether they want to come and tutor students, whether they want to come and help in a class, whatever it is that they choose to do. Um, we would love to have them, but we would love to have them come serve on committees, and we would absolutely love it if they wanted to join our capital fund <laughs> committee. Fantastic. Yes. Well, we will continue to learn more about Bridges Preparatory School in a few moments. Welcome back to 843 TV. Once again, joining us, we have Dee Matthews as well as Dr. Ithamidis from Bridges Preparatory School. Now we talked earlier about the excitement of the international travel that you offer. You have students that went to China and I understand this year you have students that are heading to Greece. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we are heading to Greece and I think one of the greatest things about the program that came in with Dr. Ithamidis is the fact that our students, as, as we all know, the world is a global economy, a global society, ever growing. So for the, our children and our students to have the ability to visit these countries, to get to know other students, to have an exchange program, opens doors for them that will never be closed again and actually facilitates new leaders of tomorrow. Absolutely. Well, in this age of online studies and all that, it's wonderful to know that you're taking it literally across the globe. So share with us a little bit more about what are the benefits of going abroad physically? Um, there is no experience uh, that you can duplicate uh, in another country except being there. I mean, you can read about it, you can taste the food, you can watch TV. It's like getting married. You don't, you, you don't know what it's like until you get married, right? I mean, <laughs> Interesting let's face example it. that you chose. But <laughs> when you take kids that may never get out of Beaufort, maybe out of the South, uh, never seen most of the U.S., and you take them in an excursion and they're in the middle of Beijing or Chunqing or Shanghai, it changes them. It changes them in a profound, meaningful way that they will never, ever forget. Um, likewise, we become the face of uh, the USA, because when kids in China and families in China think about the US, they think of kids from Bridges or staff members from Bridges. So, it, it, and it changes us, it changes them. It's, it's probably the most powerful learning experience you can have, and I, I firmly believe that. And when you put it to them that way, as they are the face of the US, what a powerful opportunity they think they're faced with is. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you give us a little bit of an idea of what they're going to see in Greece? Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can we, tell you're excited. <laughs> well, uh, I've, I've taken a group there before. This one will be even more special. We're going to be in Athens for three days. So we see the Acropolis, we'll see the National Museums. We will see Athens at its best. We'll, we'll visit the Poseidon um, Museum, which is about 43 miles, I think, uh, east of Athens. We travel to Thessaloniki, which is the financial capital in the Northeast, which is the Byzantine center of the Byzantine Empire and all of its art and all of its glory. We'll get to visit Mount Olympus. We get to go to Metsovo, and uh, Metsovo is a uh, cultural and historical center for the Macedonian um, 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 heritage. And we get to meet a lot of Greek kids at the uh, Pinewood School of um, Thessaloniki, and we get to taste Greek food, we get to dance, they'll teach us wow. how to do the Greek dances. It's, <laughs> I love it. It's, uh, the kids will see the geography, they'll look across and see um, where the Battle of Thermopylae was, and they'll actually see where that site was. Um, we've been, before we went to Delphi, where the Delphi oracles were, we've seen caves, ancient caves, we've seen drawings, history come alive to us uh, and our kids. So it's, it's going to be awesome. What is the age group that you take? We take grades? basically primarily eighth graders, ninth graders, and tenth graders. It's really a high school experience. And how long is your trip to Greece? Greece will be about 12 days. You know, you wow. figure about um, you know, a day or two getting there on either end. Actually, we leave on a Friday. We get in Greece on about 2 o'clock in the afternoon in Athens, and then we come back on the 28th. So it's about 12 days total. Uh, we have a partnership. The folks in Greece that are our partners have outlined, the. In, they've arranged the hotels, they, with the transportation. We have a Byzantine, uh, uh, probably one of the leading 
Uh, historians and visit team will be our guide throughout the entire trip. She works at the school that we're as our partner school. So we're uh, never without any good Greek <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> interpreters and guides. And, and she is a lovely, lovely lady, Amalia. Kid, kids will love her. Terrific. Now, with the opportunities we've heard about with your school, it's no surprise that it's growing at the rate that it is, but that's created its own hurdle. Tell us about your plans for the new facility. The plans for the new facility, as um, I think you heard earlier, it's, it's a little bit different. And I say that because as an educator, I've been both a teacher and a principal in the buildings, but I've been the person to walk into those new buildings and maybe I needed some desks and maybe I needed some Promethean boards but I had no idea, absolutely no idea, about the concept and the bureaucratic red tape that goes through before <laughs> the brick and mortar are ever laid. Yes. And so I have learned, and I am sad that Marty Miley, our vice chair, could not be here, and the person who heads up our facilities could not be with us today, because he speaks so much more eloquently about this, and I have learned a great deal from him, um, more than I could ever probably put in a book, or could have learned in a book, let me say that. But we are at a point right now that the golden shovel should go down in the ground in January and we're ecstatic and that we will have facilities on our location off of Highway 170 uh, in Port Royal, which we are very pleased. Port Royal has been most gracious with us. Almost everything, all of the um, I's have been dotted, the T's have been crossed. We've got a couple of little things we're winding up in the next probably week and then we'll go um, forward with that. So we're most excited. Well, we're excited to come back and hear more as this progresses and as you mentioned, as that golden shovel goes in the ground. So thank you all for sharing all these wonderful things today and thank you all for watching this episode of 843 TV.